Yo, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy Monster Premium, guys. Another video. Guys, we have the package here. We have it right here, sitting here. Um, so if you don't know, you probably know what this is. Just from the title of it, it is a black bike. I got the black version just to match my black BMW because I feel like in this garage, if I just have my black car sitting next to my black dirt bike, like it'll just look nice. Like just having the bike is going to look nice. Now we're going to put it together because I saw no videos on YouTube explaining exactly step by step how to put this thing together. So we're going to show you step by step on putting this thing together. I don't know how I've never put together a bike before, but I will learn and then teach you guys how to do it it's pretty simple I've seen some videos but no one really does it like step by step like put this screw in here the screw goes in there they just like oh look we got to put on these handlebars handlebars are on they're like okay that's how the handlebars go so I'm gonna break it down show you guys what tools you need and everything that you need but with that being said let's get started so of course first step we're gonna need to get these things off open the box and then I believe it's in a metal crate I've seen videos and that's what it looks like the box looks pretty small I mean as you guys can see my hand is sitting on it it's like two hands wide pretty tall upwards like not even as tall as my car actually lower than my car and my car is pretty it's not a tall car as you can see this is my head height and I'm over the car first thing we're gonna need some scissors and a knife just so that way we can get this box open and see what's inside Okay, so right when we open it, this is what you guys can see from the inside. It is in a metal crate or something like that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to rip the box, open it up a little bit so we can see a little bit better. This is the bike. Here's one of the wheels. It, it's, I'm freaking excited for this. This looks like one of the shocks. But let's get this actually open, open. Here we have it. This is the actual container with it open. Just the metal crate. How heavy is this? Um... <sighs> It's pretty heavy. I, I couldn't even pick. I mean, I picked it up a little bit with one hand, but it's going to be a lot harder to do if I try to do the whole thing. Um, I put the cardboard down on the floor because that way, if I put like any screws on the black top, I won't lose it. Like it's actually visible here on the floor. So I suggest doing something like that. But now looks like we need to get these screws. One, two, three, or actually just these two. Move this over. And then there's screws down here as well. One, two, three four of them we got to remove these which they look like Phillips head very easy to do it looks like they're just stripped like they're just constantly spinning and you can't really do it so we're gonna have to basically put pressure on one of these it came from China so it is a crappy Chinese bike oh there's actually a lug nut underneath it looks like so we're going to need as you guys can see right there we're gonna have to hold on to that and then unscrew it from the top that's why it kept spinning as you guys can see if we put it in you can see it's spinning, so we're going to need to fix that. Now the size we're going to be using is a 10 in order for this to actually work on here. Um, it's pretty small, but it's a pretty tight fit. Be careful with these screws because you don't want to strip them. So just go ahead and take it easy on it. I honestly suggest not using one of the drills because as you guys can see, I just kind of stripped it out a little bit. And just by using that drill right there, and you guys heard it, I didn't really try to do it too much. But these screws strip very, very easily. As you guys can see, it's already kind of starting to strip a little bit. So you got to be very careful when you're actually doing this because you don't want to strip it or anything like that. So just be very gentle with it. Next thing we're going to want to do after unscrewing all those, one, two, three, four, basically where the bars go up, there's a screw, is we're going to want to take this tire down, cut off all these clamps on top, and on the side of it so that way we can kind of get things out of here now that we have all four of these screws out what we're going to do again be very careful because you don't want to strip it um what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do exactly what we did on that side remove the zip ties remove the little wire the metal wires get all the the small pieces away from the main bike away from it so that way we don't drop it or break it or anything like that I'm not going to record this because again it's simple it's just one two three four zip ties and it looks like two metal wire clamps whatever you guys want to call them um, and that's holding up the the other little suspension thingy Woo! 
there you guys have it the freaking Apollo dirt bike now We still have these stickers that we have to remove but once I remove it It'll look really nice. I'm gonna keep them on just in case. I don't want to scratch anything But the bike looks freaking amazing man. I'm in love with this bike. It looks freaking awesome I think everything about it looks good. It's a little pit bike Um, it's probably gonna sit about this high about about the hood of my car off the ground Looks like all we got to do is do the clutch line. We got to put in the handlebars the uh the suspension, um, the tire, and then I think we gotta pump it up, change the oil, and then that's pretty much it, it looks like. We're gonna have to, oh, I also saw the key up here. The key up here, as you can see it dangling, it's kinda dark, but the key is there. As you guys can see, the key is in there, right there. Man, I can't wait, I can't wait to put this thing together, see what it looks like when it's finally done. First step we're gonna do is just remove basically everything, take it off the stand, put it on a bucket. I don't have a dirt bike stand yet, but we're gonna need to get it up off the ground. That's gonna be the hardest part doing it alone. So we're gonna put it on this little yellow bucket right here, which I hope, I hope it holds it. I hope it's strong enough to support it. Then again, we might not wanna do this because this is kind of fragile and the bike is pretty heavy, uh, but we're gonna need to get it off the ground. We're gonna need to have it supported up. I do have a jack. Actually, we'll use a jack. We can just use a jack for the car. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and try to get this because that's what's gonna be supporting the jack. I'm gonna put the jack as close as I can to it, lift up this front end and put it on the jack, that way I can jack it up that way. So first off, just put it there, and then I'll show you what that looks like. That looks to be good, it just looks like there's one thing that I messed up on. Over here, there is, as you guys can see, little metals holding in the tire, so it's kinda hard to turn it. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is remove that. I'm gonna hold this up while I cut that real quick. Hopefully it doesn't tip over. I'm just gonna put it back, actually. And on the other side, over here, you can see this is what's making it hard, is this thing right here. So we're gonna remove that real quick. Get this out of the way, that way the tire can actually be free, and put it onto the uh, jack stand. Jack this bad boy up, throw it on the kickstand, just enough to throw the kickstand down. And then that'll hopefully hold it up. It's the best thing I could think of while doing it as a one person team. Cause when you have help, it makes things a little bit easier. There we go, now it's kind of jacked up a little bit. And as you guys can see, whoo, that was a little hard as a one person team. We got the jack stand holding it up, or the kickstand. Got the tire undone, got it jacked up with the jack stand. And that makes this a lot easier cause now we can easily just slide them in, put the tire on, be good to go. And I am tired just by doing that by myself to jack it up. Be very gentle because it does seem like it still wants to tip over the other way. So what I might do is I got to get something to support it on this side. So that way it doesn't lean over this way. So I'm going to grab one of these jack stands I have down here. Now again, this is just with a one man team. You're going to want to have extra support so things don't fall over or anything like that. It's better to be safe rather than sorry. Let me do this with two hands. There we go, now it's pretty secure. It won't really tip over either way because we got that holding it up from this side and then we got the kickstand holding up from the other side. So now we can start working on it. These allergies are kicking my butt too. Okay, so let's get this box open, see what they got inside. They could have screws, they could have a, I don't know. I have no clue what's actually going to be inside of this box. Oh, so they have the assembly manual right here. So we can actually open this up and read it but if you're watching this video, you won't really need this at all. Okay, so here we have the uh, handlebar cover to make it softer. Uh, we have... They actually provide some tools that you might need for the project. In here we have all the tools, which we're not going to use. Um, but that's cool that they have it. They feel cheap. They feel extremely light, so it's probably a Chinese brand. Got to be careful with that stuff. It could break. I would just use the tools you have, a clip. What is this, one of the bearings or something like that for the suspension, I believe. I think this is the uh, kick starter, to kick start it. Um, not too sure. Again, I'm gonna read the manual. So this basically has all the parts. This is the little plastic cover, the number 007. 
that goes on the side of it. I believe it's the side, actually. All right, so starting out, what we're gonna need to do is put these on. Uh, they kind of just slide into it, as you guys can see. And then on these sides right here, this is where you tighten it down so it holds onto it. But be careful, because this one's missing a screw. And I looked in the packaging, and it was just right there on the floor. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put these in, tighten these down so that way that holds it, and then work on the next step after that. Now, if you have one of these, you can actually see exactly what size you need for these to tighten them down. Um, I have a five, which fits perfectly into it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this out, put this on the drill, and then use five to do it. Again, don't use a drill. If you wanna be safe, it's better to be safe than sorry, but I am in a rush because I've been doing this for, it's been a while. Doing this alone takes some time. So I'm gonna screw these in, tighten them down, and then we're gonna work from there. Now at the top up here, you're gonna wanna have this flush. Um, I've seen videos and people usually just have it flush on it, not like this. This is sitting up too high. They just have it flush sitting perfectly on it. Just make sure everything is straight. Just by tilting it, as you can see at the bottom, it's a little crooked, so we're gonna turn it, straighten it out a little bit. Kinda line things up with the bike. Like the bike right now is straight like this. Have the handlebars coming down straight. Lighting is horrible in this garage. Next up, we gotta do the handlebars, which they're under here. Um, it's basically this plastic bag going across. It looks like it's being held up by zip ties. Again, there's a zip tie there, zip tie under here that's holding it. And then once you get the zip ties out, I believe that's all of them. I don't feel anything down there, nothing here. So it's just one zip tie there and one zip tie here holding it up. So once we get those cut, we're gonna be able to work on it. So then, So the next step that you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna get the spacers. Um, these are gonna go into the handlebar, as you guys can see like this right here. Uh, they go right on the handlebar. The little one, or the big one, the big one goes on top and then the handlebar goes right in between there. And then you put the little one and then you put the screws in. I'll show you exactly what that looks like. When I finish, again, I'm doing it one hand, so it's kinda hard holding this big ass camera, as you guys can see in the reflection. Really big camera, hard to record and do it, but I'll get it on there for you guys and show you what it looks like. All right, once you get the handlebars on, you can see that there are these little grooves, as you guys can see. Let me focus the camera up a little. There's very little grooves. It kind of looks like the paint's kind of like bent. You can see it right here in this angle. These grooves right here need to be completely underneath this, so go ahead and push it on over. So that way it's completely under it. That's how you know where the mark is. Those grooves are there so that way this can clamp on a little bit better and grip in a little bit better. All right guys, I finished putting on the little number plate and then the tire guard. Basically it's pretty simple. There's three screws that go in under here. As you guys can see, there's three screws that go in down there. You gotta be careful because I stripped one of them out. As you guys can see that back one in the back left stripped out. They're pretty hard to take off. I don't know why it was so difficult taking those off, um, but it, it's pretty simple. Next up is to put on this tire, which is going to be pretty easy. Basically how the diagram shows it is it's gonna go in so the brake disc is gonna go on this left side of it, I believe. Um, if it doesn't, then I'll play with it and fix it. But if not, it just goes like this, put it in between. The good thing about this jack stand is, as you guys can see, this is pretty low, it's sitting low. Instead of picking up the tire and doing it, all I have to do is drop the jack and then this, this will drop as well to the right angle that I need it to be at. And then what we need to do is we need to put this through this side, we need to come through, then this washer goes on, then this goes through the tire, then this bigger washer goes on, um, and then the bolt or the nut goes on on that side. So basically the washers are sitting The reason the bigger washer goes on the brake this side is because as you guys can see it's deeper in right here So it needs to stick out a little bit more and then this one the smaller one goes on the opposite side over there So I'll show you guys what that looks like putting it on right now. All right now that I have those on you guys um, Basically as you can see I swapped it out the brake disc the disc actually goes on this right side uh, I apologize for that and that means this big washer goes on the right side It goes wherever basically the brake disc goes so that way it's flush with it um, and now we're gonna go ahead and put it on and then on this side same exact thing but we're basically going to be putting this in so let me pull this out a little bit it's pretty heavy it's hard doing this by yourself um, but when you have no other choice Really nothing much you can do. You just got to play with it, wiggle it in. There we go. Just twist it a little bit. Then you can lift it up, push it in, 
push it in through both sides and you can see we got the little washer over here uh, right there it's inside of there and then we have the other little or the big washer over here on this side and then that's basically it all we have to do now is put on the big nut that it came with it didn't come with a washer I suggest if you have a washer try to put one on if not just go ahead and screw it on tighten it down and then you'll be good to go now we're basically going to put the caliper on the disc uh, running from the brake line which is the right side of the handlebars you want to go ahead and run it down um, and then you can clip it in through here basically this thing right here we're going to go ahead and clip the wire through that and then we have another piece up here that we're going to clip the wire through and then this is basically plug in place so as you guys can see there's two holes at the top of the caliper two holes right there next to the freaking brake and then as you can see the little baby brake pads are inside of there i don't know if you guys can see it very very small little brake pads in there that's basically going to be holding the disc so that way the brake works and then we're going to go ahead and put it in goes on the inside we have nuts screws and washers right here very simple i don't want to do it just because one hand is going to be extremely hard to do it but that's how you guys do it these came on the caliper so if you're looking for these they should be already in the holes if they're not in there you got to call them and let them know that they sent some wacky stuff and hopefully they'll go ahead and send it over it sometimes they might miss some screws don't forget to remove this from the two uh pa brake pads this was sitting in between the two brake pads pull it out it's very simple get rid of it and then i'll hook it up right now all right you guys i finally finished the bike it took way longer than i thought difficulty wise if you're doing it by yourself and you've never put together a dirt bike pit bike or anything like that it's pretty difficult it takes time doing it alone but this is the final product as you guys can see the sunlight is kind of bad right here so let me go outside final product it, it, it looks freaking nice i love the bike i mean it, it's a bigger bike than i expected and as you guys can see like up to my waist it's literally up to my waist so it's a pretty decent sized bike i'm five foot seven so i'm not like that tall but it's a bike that fits my height which is perfect i got the black one so it matches the car in the garage it looks really good next i just got to change the oil put in some gas and then we're gonna do a startup and see what it sounds like the thing is, is you gotta kick this bitch so much when you first start it oh, oh shit. Got something. come on <sighs> Enough. Oh. Don't record the first startup. No. <laughs> it's gonna be a little bit. I'm just sending it to the song. Damn. At least it didn't blow up, don't it? Give it a little more. got to heat up. It's the first time it turned on, so. guys the battery is about to die on my camera but here is the finished product the bike is honestly amazing like I really do love this bike it's not it's not bad uh, for the price that you pay it, it runs smooth so far if I ever run into problems or anything like that definitely let you guys know what the problems are I changed the oil 10w40 into it and then took out the old oil and then I think I put like a gallon and a half of gasoline inside of it or maybe just a gallon and I did 93 which it says to do 92 which I don't think that matters too much um, but the bike the bike rides smooth very easy when you first start it you're gonna want to basically not hold in the clutch put the choke where's the choke at put the choke 
all the way in the middle so there's three different settings for that you want to put it in the middle and then you just kick start it make sure the key's on make sure this is pushed in for on and then you just kick it and it starts up here i'll show you real quick come on bro <laughs> no way we edit we edited those out <laughs> and then when you first start it up you're gonna want to like rev it up a little bit because it's gonna want to die on you if you take your hand off the throttle so you're gonna want to just let it warm up by just just revving it up keeping your hand on the throttle so it doesn't die on you like you can kind of hear it trying to like die down and then from there you just ride 